Welcome in to today's edition of Just the Truth. Glad to have you join me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. Joe Biden was speaking to a group of firefighters in Philadelphia and told the story that he has told a number of times, and each time he's been called out on it, is Biden's version of his house almost burning down, and he claims that his wife, Jill, and the family cat was inside. You've heard the story before. And again, each time he's called out on it. So here's my question to you. Is Joe Biden just a forgetful old man? Or is Joe Biden just an old man who happens to be a habitual liar? I'm going to ask you to help me decide on today's edition of just the truth the top democrat on the house oversight committee has been informally meeting with republicans behind closed doors we're told in an effort to try to persuade them to abandon the impeachment effort against joe biden as gop lawmakers prepare to vote to formalize the inquiry possibly as soon as this week and president biden's week got off to a rocky start yesterday as a new 2024 election poll released, found him trailing three of the leading Republican presidential candidates in two battleground general election matchups. I'll break those numbers down for you today. The Texas State Supreme Court has ruled against a woman in the middle of a legal war on whether she can get an abortion due to what she and her doctor are calling a medical emergency. 31-year-old Kate Cox has fled the state of Texas seeking an abortion-friendly state to abort her child. Your comments are welcome, as well as your voice messages and your emails. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Your texts are welcome on the Truth Text Line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, (laughs) but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because... I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Breaking news. The Supreme Court has indicated that it will expedite consideration of a petition by special counsel Jack Smith on whether former President Donald Trump can be prosecuted on charges that he plotted to overturn the twenty. 20- 20 election results. Smith made his request for the court to act with unusual speed to prevent any delays that could push back the trial of the 2024 Republican presidential primary front runner currently set to begin March the 4th until after next year's presidential election. The court has asked Trump's lawyers to respond to the motion by next Wednesday, December 20th, two days later than Smith had requested. We'll keep you informed on uh, where that heads. President Biden once again told his often exaggerated story about a time when a minor kitchen fire occurred at his Delaware home as a result of a lightning strike. This was back in 2004, and he says that it almost claimed the life of First Lady Jill Biden and the family cat. Biden began his speech to a group of firefighters in Philadelphia. Uh, This was yesterday. He, He told the story again. Didn't quite go as far as he has in the past, but still included the claim that his wife, the first lady, Jill, uh, Jill Biden, uh, and this was back when he was a U.S. senator, was in danger despite the fire being small and contained to the kitchen, according to local firefighters. My firefighters, the guys I grew up with, they saved my life. They also saved my home and my wife's life. When I was away, it was the last day uh, that uh, the most famous guy doing Meet the Press uh, in Washington, D.C., and I was doing the program. And uh, what happened was uh, there was a lightning struck a little pond behind my house, hit a wire, came up through the basement of my home and three stories, and the smoke literally ended up being that thick, literally that thick. You've seen it. You guys have seen it. I wasn't there. And my wife was there, and my, my dog and my cat, <laughs> and my 67 Corvette. Um, but all kidding aside, they saved my wife, got her out, saved my home. According to a 2004 report from the Associated Press, 
Lightning did, in fact, strike the Bidens' home and started a small fire. According to the local fire department, it was a small fire that was contained to the kitchen. The report said firefighters got the blaze under control within 20 minutes and that they were able to keep the flames from spreading beyond the kitchen. Despite those details, Biden once told the story in a way that included the house burning down with Jill still inside. Speaking on a New Hampshire bridge back in 2021 about his bipartisan infrastructure plan, Biden then said, quote, without this bridge, as I said earlier, it's a 10 mile detour just to get to the other side. And I know having a house burned down with my wife in it, she got out safely, God willing, that having a significant portion of it burn, I can tell 10 minutes makes a hell of a lot of a difference, he said. Biden told the story again in August following the deadly Maui wildfires in an attempt to relate to the surviving victims who had, in fact, lost their homes, and in some cases, family members. He said then, quote, I don't want to compare difficulties, but we have a little sense, Jill and I, of what it was like to lose a home. Years ago, now 15 years, I was in Washington doing Meet the Press. Lightning struck at home on a little lake outside the home, not a lake or a big pond. It hit the wire and came up underneath our home into the air conditioning ducts. To make a long story short, I almost lost my wife, my 67 Corvette, and my cat, he said at the time. He was later blasted by critics for making the comparison with some calling it disgusting and self-centered, telling this story to people who had literally, truly lost their homes and lost loved ones. But this is not the only story Biden told the Philly firefighters. It gets better. President Biden referred to the presidential helicopter, which we all know is Marine One. He called it Air Force Helicopter One. Uh, This again yesterday to, to the same group of Philadelphia firefighters while claiming that President Ronald Reagan sent the chopper to take him from Delaware to the D.C. area Walter Reed Military Hospital when Biden had a brain aneurysm back in 1980. I would not be here were it not for my local fire company in Wilmington, Delaware. They saved my life. I had a cranial aneurysm. I wasn't, it was in the middle of a snowstorm. Not a joke. I couldn't figure out how they were going to, for President Reagan, was nice enough to send Air Force uh, a, a Helicopter One, take me down, but it couldn't fly. And so my fire department. My fire department came up, put me in the back, and took me on heavy snow on the day I went down to Walter Reed, because that's where I had to get for this operation. I got there for a nine-hour operation, saved my life. Again, exaggerating things that are very easily verified. The uh, 81-year-old president, like other biographical details that he shared in public remarks, does not support the story from his own autobiography or by Reagan's daily presidential diary. Uh, Again, these types of things, when you're a public official like Joe Biden has been for over 40 years, there's lots of ways to prove whether something is true or not true. Now, the latter part of the story involving the local fire department is described in Biden's 2000 book, Promises to Keep. But Reagan offering or dispatching the presidential helicopter is never mentioned. A review of records posted online by the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library turned up no corroborating evidence as well. Press reports indicate that then Senator Joe Biden was admitted to Walter Reed on February the 12th, 1988, and Reagan's daily diary, which includes a detailed account of his meetings and phone calls, shows no discussions about sending the chopper to assist the Democrat senator. In fact, Reagan himself was unable to use Marine One on that morning, on the morning of February 12th, due to poor weather. According to a handwritten annotation, forcing him to take a motorcade to Joint Base Andrews in Maryland to board Air Force One for a flight to Los Angeles. The term Marine One is used for whichever helicopter the president is traveling in, of course, just like the uh, just like the uh, Air Force One, whatever airplane the president's in is Air Force One. Doesn't matter what it is; it could be a Cessna 172. If the president of the United States is on it, it's Air Force One. Uh, so, so Marine One, uh, as in the case uh, with the term Air Force One, 
uh, is typically joined by two identical decoys. You may have seen this in some of the, the documentaries, some of the images. When, when Marine One lifts off from the White House grounds, immediately two other identical helicopters join it, crisscrossing their way across the skyline of Washington, D.C., uh, again, to try to make it difficult for anyone who might be trying to cause harm to the president. It's unclear how many times presidents may have tried to loan one of the military helicopters as a favor, but uh, in this case, we don't, we can't find where it happened with Joe Biden. Biden's autobiography provides a detailed account of his trip to Walter Reed, triggered by what he said was his brother James Biden's determination that the facility had the best expert to treat him there. Biden wrote, weather conditions made a medevac helicopter flight too dangerous. I had no idea what time it was, but I found myself on a gurney, my test results strapped to my chest, being wheeled out the doors of St. Francis Hospital in Wilmington, Delaware, toward a waiting ambulance. So he writes in his own notes that it was the weather was too bad for a medevac helicopter, <laughs> but yet he's telling people that Ronald Reagan sent Marine One to pick him up. He goes on to talk about the ambulance ride, how it was uh, manned by my friends in the local volunteer fire department, he said. He, again, he's talking to some first responders. He talks uh, about the medical personnel, how they uh, were not, uh, how they were concerned about a situation, that if the aneurysm burst, that there wasn't anything they could do, and he would probably have died. They talk about, he talks about how they rode for about a half an hour the ambulance driver uh, picked his way through uh, a, this snowstorm, uh, suddenly noticed that they weren't moving anymore. He asked well, what's going on, and he claims that Jill Biden had to, uh, had to convince the driver to keep driving in the bad weather to get them to the hospital. Biden wrote that he was discharged from Walter Reed after 10 days, but then had to be taken back to the hospital for another 10 days, and President Reagan even sent his own doctor to check on me, he said. So, so now we go from uh, Reagan loaning him Marine One to Reagan sending his own personal physician to check on him. He said, when I got back home, Jill and the staff made the decision to keep me completely isolated. There would be no work, no phone calls, no nothing. President Reagan had called twice. Jill was grateful to the president, but she made no exceptions to her rule. So now he's turned down a phone call from Ronald Reagan. Wow. The White House did not immediately respond to the New York Post request for comment on whether there's evidence to support any of these tales. Biden has made a, a series of incorrect public remarks about his own biography, including telling a debunked story involving an Amtrak conductor 13 times as president and claiming last year that his uncle Frank Biden had been awarded the Purple Heart despite chronological details making the story factually impossible. A New York Times poll released last month, and this, this is why all of this is important. Uh, again, it's one thing for an old man to get confused and, and to be forgetful. It's another if that old man happens to be president of the United States. The New York Times poll released found that 71% of swing state voters say Biden is too old to be an effective president, while just 39% said so of former President Donald Trump, who, again, 77, not too far away, uh, and, and, of course, seeking a rematch with Biden next year. Now, Biden's defenders say he simply is prone to gaffes that are aggravated by a lifelong stutter. Well, what does stuttering have to do with lying? Which is it? Are these mistakes by an old man who can't remember? Or again, is Joe Biden a habitual liar? Remember, he ended his first presidential campaign in 1987, shortly before his aneurysm, after revelations that he had plagiarized campaign speeches and a law school pa uh, paper, as well as that he exaggerated his academic record. So think about that. He ended a presidential campaign most people have forgotten about it. Many of you probably weren't even born. He, en he ended it because he was caught to have plagiarized campaign speeches. <laughs> Fast forward a couple of decades, he's sitting in the Oval Office and still telling lies. 
864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Love to get your comments. You can send me your text. You can leave me a quick voice message. Your emails are welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. So while we're talking about Joe Biden, and and today just seems like Joe Biden Day, (laughs) there's plenty of material, and I promise you, I'm just telling you just a small piece of it. The top Democrat on the House Oversight Committee has been informally meeting with, with Republicans, we're told, behind closed doors in an effort to try to persuade them to abandon the impeachment effort against Joe Biden as GOP lawmakers are preparing to vote to formalize the inquiry. Reports are that committee ranking member Jamie Raskin, he's a Democrat from Maryland, has been quietly discussing impeachment with House Republicans with whom he has close relationships. Uh, This is coming from multiple sources with direct knowledge of the conversations. Sources said that Raskin has been meeting with quote, right wing to more moderate members in an effort to counter GOP arguments, investigative steps, and evidence collected throughout the investigation. The sources say that some Republicans in recent days have been, uh, quote, especially receptive to seeing the administration's record of cooperation with investigators. Meanwhile, Fox News says that they've obtained fact sheets that House Oversight Democrats plan to share with both Democrats and Republicans to support their efforts to stop the impeachment inquiry. Um, Fox, uh, a, a senior House Democrat aide told Fox News, quote, these fact seats are a hat in hand, fact-based appeal to House Republicans. Republicans may not be getting all the facts from Mr. Comer, so we're making sure that they have the full picture as they decide whether to endorse this impeachment effort. So they have their own version of the story that evidently contradicts some of what James Comer has shown us, like documents showing that money has been wired from China to multiple Hunter Biden-owned businesses that made its way to the uh, president's brother, James Biden, that made its way to Joe Biden to pay off these supposed personal loans. We'll get to more of that in just a minute. Uh, One memo is said to focus on obstruction in an effort to defend the Biden administration as well as banks and private citizens for providing extraordinary cooperation with the committee's investigation into the Biden family's business dealings and whether President Biden himself was involved. Another memo defends the firing of Ukrainian prosecutor Viktor Shokin. Joe Biden, as vice president, boasted gleefully that he successfully pressured Ukraine To fire Mr. Shokin, the then vice president threatened to withhold a billion dollars of critical U.S. aid if Shokin was not fired. Shokin at the time was investigating Burisma Holdings. And we know who Burisma is. We know that uh, they they liked Hunter Biden, uh, uh, this Ukrainian natural gas firm where Hunter sat on the board and collected a very lucrative monthly payment for what? He certainly didn't have expertise to be on the board, knew nothing about energy. He did happen to be the vice president of the United States' son. Democrats on the committee uh, have echoed past statements from the White House and the president that Shokin's firing was actually the culmination of a years-long effort by a bipartisan international coalition to address and root out corruption in Ukraine. We've been meddling in Ukraine forever. Republicans as part of the impeachment inquiry have been investigating this FBI-generated FD-1023 form, which alleged a bribery scheme between Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and Burisma CEO, Mikola Zelaski. The FD-1023 is a confidential human source reporting document. It reflects the FBI's interview with a highly credible confidential source who detailed multiple meetings and conversations he or she had with a top executive of Ukrainian natural gas firm Burisma Holdings over the course of several years, starting back in 2015. Who was vice president? Joe Biden was vice president in 2015. The document includes allegations from Zelaski that he was coerced into paying Joe Biden and Hunter Biden millions of dollars to get Shokin fired. That document has been passed to special counsel David Weiss, who has been investigating Hunter Biden since 2000 
and 18. But House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer telling Fox News that it's ironic that Democrats continue to say there's no evidence and then at every turn seek to prevent the Oversight Committee from gathering evidence. Comer told Fox, despite Democrats' best efforts, the House Oversight Committee has produced evidence revealing Joe Biden knew about, participated in, and benefited from his family cashing in on the Biden last name. He said, we will continue to follow the facts and hold this president accountable for his corruption. Meanwhile, the Democrats also prepared a memo, we're told, that focuses on the funds that Joe Biden received from his brother, James Biden, in 2017 and 2018. Both checks, one of them was for 200000 the other one was for 40000 They were labeled as loan repayment in the memo section on the check. Democrats stressed that Joe Biden, as a private citizen, did in fact make short-term interest-free loans to his brother James, who later repaid him. They want, they want us to think it's just that simple. But House Oversight Republicans are demanding documentation from the White House to prove that these were, in fact, loans to be repaid. Republicans have also pointed to the timing of those payments, specifically the 2018 $40,000 check, as it came just days after James Biden was wired funds from Hunter Biden after he received $5 million wired from a Chinese energy company. Did you follow that? I know it's, it's, it, it, it's a tangled web. Republicans say that this is an example of how Joe Biden benefited from his family's foreign business dealings. Now, I keep going back to my little pea brain here thinking this should be easy. If Joe Biden did, in fact, loan his brother money, that's okay. That's fine. You can loan your family members money. But just show us the copies of the checks that he when he loaned his brother the money. If they were loans to be repaid, there has to be a record of when those and when those loans were made, right? If they're so fast to point to the fact that in the memo section of the check that Joe Biden received, actually the two checks, had loan repayment, why won't they quickly find get copies of the checks from Joe Biden to James Biden in the memo should be loan to my brother, right? It's just that easy. It's just that simple. Hunter Biden received a $5 million wire from the Chinese company in August of 2018 to his bank account, Hudson West three. Hunter Biden then transferred 400,000 to his Owasco PC account. Funds were then transferred to a business account belonging to his uncle, James Biden, and then later transferred to a personal account belonging to James Biden and Sarah Biden. A lot of transfers going on here, right? Comer claims that they used those funds to then write a check to Joe Biden for the $40,000. That's the check that was labeled, quote, loan repayment. President Biden, of course, has maintained he was never in business with his son, never discussed his son's foreign business dealings. Fox News Digital first reported last week metadata revealing that Biden communicated with his son and with his son's business partner, Eric Schwarren, hundreds of times using an email alias while serving as vice president. Schwerin, though, at the time, served as Biden's bookkeeper, so some of it, I guess, could be explained. Biden, last week from the White House, responded to a question, uh, actually got irritated and just said that it was a bunch of lies when a reporter asked him to be specific about those loan repayments. I'll talk to you more after the also China. President Biden on Ukraine and also China. Uh, There is polling by the Associated Press that shows that almost 70 percent of Americans, including 40 percent of Democrats, believe that you acted either illegally or unethically in regards to your family's business interests. Can you explain to the Americans, uh, to Americans amid this impeachment inquiry, why you interacted with so many of your son and brother's foreign business associates? I'm not going to comment that I did not. And 
It's just a bunch of lies. You didn't interact with many of their business associates? I did not. There's what? lies. What's the difference? Do you think there is any Democrat? Uh, lies, lies, lies. That's, that's his response. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Colmer, House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan, House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Jason Smith are all leading the impeachment inquiry against President Joe Biden. Again, they could vote as soon as this week on formalizing that. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Love to get your text messages. Uh, You can leave a quick voice message as well. One final note on Biden. His uh, week got off to a rocky start yesterday as a new 2024 election poll release found that he's trailing three of the leading Republican presidential candidates in two key battleground general election matchups. According to the CNN poll, former President Donald Trump, former United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley, and uh, and Florida Governor, President Florida Governor, Ron DeSantis would nearly all defeat Joe Biden in both Georgia and in Michigan, two key states that he won in 2020. They would win it if the election were held today. The survey found that uh, Donald Trump leads Biden in Michigan by a whopping 10%, receiving 50% 50 support over only uh, 40% who said they'd vote for Biden. About 64% of registered voters in the state said they do not approve of Biden's handling of the presidency. Biden trailed DeSantis by seven percentage points, but would lose to Haley by an even larger margin of 12% in the Great Lakes state. And these are the polls that we are hearing Nikki Haley often mention these days that she can easily defeat Joe Biden. In a hypothetical 2020 rematch in Georgia, 49% of registered voters say they would prefer Donald Trump to 44% who would again vote for Joe Biden. Haley was also favored over Biden in the Peach State, 49 to 43%, but the latter edged DeSantis, 48% to 45%. The poll also found that 61% of registered voters in the state said they disapproved of Biden's job performance. We need to check in with our, our buddy, Dennis in rail Georgia to see what the uh, temperature is down there. Dennis, if you, uh, if you're listening to, uh, the podcast, send me a quick text, eight, six, four, four, seven, seven, 56, 39, despite DeSantis and Haley besting Biden in the key matchup with the exception of the, uh, of, of Georgia, Trump ultimately leads the GOP primary field by nearly 40% in both Michigan and Georgia. Among young voters in Michigan, a key demographic to capture in 2024, 69% said that Biden does not have the stamina for another four years. Amid concerns over the president's cognitive abilities, 66% of young voters in Georgia also reported feeling that the Democrat president does not have the sharpness they are looking for in a candidate. Doesn't take a whole lot to see that he does not have the cognitive skills, does it? The Michigan portion of the poll was conducted among registered voters between November 29th through December the 6th at a margin of area of plus or minus uh, 3.4%. The Georgia portion was conducted November 30th through de- December 7th uh, with a margin of error of minus 3.3 percentage points. The results come just days after a Wall Street Journal poll also revealed that Trump would be victorious over Biden in a hypothetical general election matchup locking in 47% of the support over the president's 43%. Other polls have also shown that Trump consistently either ties or leads Biden nationally, and in a number of other battleground states, his voters overwhelmingly view Biden's age as a very concerning factor. Of course, the Biden campaign would not respond to any inquiries. What do you say? Does, Does Biden stand a chance in 2024 or am I getting a little too, uh, too (laughs) optimistic here? By the, by the way, uh, before we leave this part to, uh, the, the Biden crime family, interesting observation from 
George Washington University law professor and Fox News analyst Jonathan Turley. Uh, he was speaking with Fox News host John Roberts, saying that there were some very important things that were missing from the recent Hunter Biden indictment. Here's the exchange. <laughs> well, it was a fascinating indictment. Obviously, it shatters many of the things stated by the president and the White House. It documents a level of influence peddling that we have never seen the like of. Uh, just millions of dollars coming from foreign sources going through all of these accounts. But throughout this, there's one person who is it just seems to be completely uh, omitted, and that is Joe Biden. It's mm-hmm. like arresting a bank robber for speeding away from the crime scene without mentioning why he was speeding. And, you know, you, you all these details are how Hunter Biden got all of this money from all of these foreign sur- for, uh, sources from Ukraine, Romania, China. Uh, but there is nary a mention of the president himself. Uh, you know, the Department of Justice mm-hmm. has given out FARA viol- charges to people like Paul Manafort uh, in, in rather short order. Uh, they, they were not in any way reluctant uh, to bring those charges that you're an unregistered foreign agent. This complaint screams of being an unregistered foreign agent, but that is also not mentioned. Uh, but finally, it's also not mentioned, of course, that they allowed some of these crimes to expire. Yeah. There's still no explanation why this, the special counsel decided when he didn't have to, to let the early felonies expire. Uh, and all of those questions are left unanswered. That is a bit concerning, isn't it? Makes no sense. Why would a prosecutor who supposedly is following the law, enforcing the law, allow someone like Hunter Biden, whom you know has broken the law, allow the clock to tick down, run out of time? Maybe somebody will eventually get around to asking that question and getting an answer. Moving on, and this next uh, this next segment here on mortgage interest rates, they've soared since Joe Biden took office. You want to guess how much? These types of pocketbook issues are just another sign that Joe Biden is in trouble. Before I get to that, though, let me tell you about PhD weight loss and nutrition. Over three years ago, I met Dr. Ashley Lucas and her team at PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. I started the program. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, and I've been able to maintain that weight loss. I've shared that journey with you over the years, and I've talked with you about the 30 pounds, but I've also talked with you about some of the non-scale victories as well, because you can share in these non-scale victories too. Life is just better without that extra weight, I promise you. Within the first few months, you're going to start sleeping better. You're going to be in a better mood. You're going to have more energy. You're going to be uh, much sharper, be able to focus better. And this is going to have a lasting effect on your life. If you're ready to not only lose the weight for the last time, but to gain the energy to do the things you love, don't wait another day. Call my friends at PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition and get started. 864-252-4925. You can find them online at myphdweightloss.com. Call today. Set up yet that initial appointment, 864-252-4925. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. So when Joe Biden first assumed office in 2021, the average monthly new home payment was $1,000. $915. Now, now remember that number because today it has ballooned to 3,322 as of third quarter of 2023. This is according to an analysis from the wall street journal. So think about that prior to Joe Biden going into the oval office, 1,915 was the average new home payment. Now 3,322. What is wrong with those numbers? Following the increase in cost, housing is now less affordable than at any other time in recent history with mortgage rates exceeding 7% and median house pricing prices rising to over 392000 as of October, again, according to the Wall Street Journal. High inflation and a relative tightening of the supply of housing have resulted in these increased prices. While the high mortgage rates 
are in response to the increased cost of credit. The average for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage reached all-time low January 7, 2021, reaching 2.65% just days before Joe Biden took office. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of, of St. Louis, they, they, they're the ones who, who monitor this, mortgage rates then reached a recent peak November the 2nd, last month, at, of 7.76%. It's uh, receded just a bit as of this month at to 7.03%. The, the uh, rising mortgage rates follow hikes in the federal funds rate by the Federal Reserve, which put the rate in a range of 5.25 to 5.5, a 22-year high. They did this to combat inflation that peaked at 9.1% in June of last year. Many economists partially attribute the high inflation, of course, to Biden's huge government spending plans, like his American Rescue Plan and the Inflation Reduction Act, which still just irritates me to no end. The Inflation Reduction Act did not have a single thing in it that involved reducing inflation. (laughs) Rent payments have not experienced as sharp of an increase, thank goodness, as they are less responsive to rising interest rates. Uh, They rose from an average of 1,784 just uh, in first quarter 2021 to just over 2,000, 2,184 per month as of third quarter 2023, again, according to the Wall Street Journal. High interest rates add a substantial amount to the cost of a home due to the loan's long duration. With just a 5% rate on a 30-year mortgage for a $320,000 home equating to nearly $300,000 in additional cost over the course of the loan. At 8% interest on the same $320,000 home, home buyers would pay an additional $525,000 over the life of that loan. And that's not the only thing. We've, we felt the effects of rising inflation under Biden uh, with uh, higher gas, higher food prices, higher everything. And Democrats wonder why the polls are not favoring Joe Biden's reelection. 864-477-JOEY is the truth text line. Texter says a Biden wants to slow illegals, not close, not close the border. He has to be stopped, and I agree, no money for any country till our country is secure and yesterday close the border again. We can only hope. Don't see that happening as long as Joe Biden is sitting in the big chair. Our text of encouragement today, you've got to be original because if you're like someone else, what do they need you for? God bless. Thank you for that uh, that text. Your text are welcome. 864-477-5639. So after a week of legal warfare, the woman at the center of a legal fight in Texas over whether she can receive an emergency abortion has left the state to get an abortion in an undisclosed abortion-friendly state. Portions of today's show brought to you by Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Are you tired of buying appliances from inexperienced sales staff who have absolutely no appliance knowledge with so many different options, brands, features, you know, it's kind of tough sometimes to figure out which one's right for you, right? You can't afford to buy the wrong one because appliances are not cheap. That's why I recommend shopping at discounted appliance warehouse. They have an A plus better business bureau rating. They have nearly perfect reviews on Google. The team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they have the knowledge that you need to have confidence that you're going to make the right purchase. You're more than just a credit card swipe at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. They make you feel like part of the family, and I've been part of that family for years now. It's where I go to anytime I need a new appliance for my home or for any of my rental properties. Discounted Appliance Warehouse. It's worth a short drive to Pickens. Find them online at dawpickens.com. D-A-W-Pickens.com. So a district, a Texas district court judge last Thursday granted Kate Cox permission to get an abortion despite Texas' strict ban, the first time a pregnant woman has sought a court order for the procedure since Roe v. Wade was overturned last year. But within hours, Attorney General Ken Paxton 
asked the state Supreme Court to block the order immediately. The court did so late Friday night. And then yesterday afternoon, the Texas Supreme Court reversed that lower court's ruling that would have allowed this woman to obtain an abortion under the state's, quote, medical emergency exception hours after the woman's attorney said that she had left the state to find the procedure elsewhere. Kate Cox, she's 31 years old, the mother of two in the Dallas area. She sought the abortion after learning that her fetus has a fatal condition and doctors told her she could risk her future fertility if she doesn't get the abortion. A state judge ruled last week that Cox, who is 21 weeks pregnant, could terminate her pregnancy. Again, the Texas Supreme Court temporarily stopped that ruling, put it on hold on Friday. Yesterday, put it on hold forever as they ruled against her. The uh, Center for Reproductive Rights, which represents Ms. Cox, announced that the 31-year-old mother had left the state of Texas to get health care elsewhere, following what the group described as a week of legal whiplash. Then a few hours later, the state's high court ruled against her. The ruling calls into question whether this decision could either deter women in similar situations from seeking a court-authorized abortion. The center did not disclose more details about Miss Cox's plans, where she went, uh, but just said that there were offers to help her access abortion from Kansas to Colorado to Canada. Miss Cox's attorney said she just wants her care the fastest way possible. Okay, uh, Miss Cox's lawsuit is believed to be one of the first attempts in the country by an individual seeking a court order abortion since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. The medical emergency exception in Texas allows for an abortion if the mother has a life-threatening physical condition while pregnant or has a serious risk of substantial impairment of a major bodily function. Critics argue that the statute is too vague and has a, has a chilling effect on doctors who fear criminal po- prosecution. The same legal group representing Ms. Cox, the Center for Reproductive Rights, is also representing a group of women and physicians before the Texas Supreme Court in a lawsuit seeking more clarity. The state argues the law is adequate. Following Thursday's ruling from District Court Judge Maya uh, Gamble, A.G. Paxton issued a direct threat to hospitals and physicians saying that the court's order would not protect them from prosecution if they performed an abortion on Ms. Cox. In Texas, a doctor who performs an abortion can face life in prison. Abortion rights advocates are following the case closely as many have been searching for uh, 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 some creative ways, I guess you could say, to challenge strict abortion bans. While previous cases involved abortion clinics or doctors suing, some newer lawsuits have come from the patients themselves, like Ms. Cox. Uh, an example is an anonymous pregnant woman in Kentucky filed a lawsuit on behalf of herself as well as all Kentuckians who are pregnant or may become pregnant, seeking to end the state's ban altogether. And we're going to see these challenges. This is just the beginning of it. The Texas Supreme Court is separately considering a case brought by a group of women who experienced severe pregnancy complications and were denied abortion care. The lawsuit isn't trying to overturn the ban, but aims to make the state clarify the ban's medical exemptions so doctors can perform abortions without fear of losing their lives or being prosecuted. We'll continue to follow this. Hey, if you're listening in South Carolina, quick, uh, quick note here, influenza, influenza season, uh, is, is coming on strong. It's accelerated in South Carolina with the flu activity now widespread in over 20 counties, according to health officials. There were 2,283 lab-confirmed uh, flu tests reported the week of November 26th through December the 2nd. The latest data available, according to the South Carolina Department of Environmental Health and Environmental Control, that's a sizable jump from the lab-confirmed com- flu tests prior to that. There have been over 10,000 lab-confirmed tests so far this flu season. The latest data shows that statewide 7.3% of patient visits to healthcare providers 
were for flu-like illness, which is more than double the state's 3.2 baseline. These uh, flu-like illness activity level overall is very high, according to DHEC. There's some counties in the upstate of South Carolina, where I live, that are particularly affected. Oconee, Pickens, Anderson, Greenville, Spartanburg, Lawrence, Newberry, you're all in that uh, in the higher range of flu cases. And all uh, other uh, areas around the state, Charleston, Collison County, Kershaw, Richland, Darlington, Florence, Ori, uh, high numbers down there too. The South Carolina flu season is underway, folks. Uh, so for those of you who do typically get the flu shots, now if you haven't received it already, now's the time to do it. Health officials say that flu vaccines are strongly recommended for everyone six months and older with rare exceptions such as people with specific allergies and children younger than six months of age. Vaccines are available at offices of health care providers and many pharmacies, including Walgreens, CVS, and all of the national chains. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list, let me encourage you to go to my website right now, JoeyHudson.com. Click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails with the most up-to-date news. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Keep your comments coming via the Truth text line, 864-477-JOEY. Keep your emails coming to joey at joeyhudson.com. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Until tomorrow, remember, folks, God's got this. He's still in control.